Hi everyone, my name is Lauren and today I will be presenting a work by myself and my colleague Bigul Bilgin on the classification of quadratic Boolean functions. So we will actually talk here about factorial Boolean functions, uh, which are Boolean functions with multiple output bits. And in symmetric primitives, we often use S boxes, which are actually balanced factorial Boolean functions. And I will quickly recall here some S box properties that we often use. So one way to represent an S box is with its lookup table. Um, this shows very clearly uh, what the outputs are for every input. An alternative is to use the algebraic normal form, which gives us a Boolean function for every output bit as a function of the input bits. Then an important property of S boxes um, is their algebraic degree. And this is something that we can read directly from the algebraic normal form because it is the degree of the, it is the largest degree that occurs in the Boolean functions of the A and F. Finally, we also care about some properties for cryptographic security. And two important properties are differential uniformity and linearity which are used to indicate the resistance against respectively differential and linear cryptanalysis. Now, the space of S boxes or Boolean functions is very large. So an important tool is the property of affine equivalence. Two functions are considered affine equivalent if and only if there exist input and output affine permutations that transform one function into the other. This equivalence is so useful because it preserves many properties such as the algebraic degree, the differential uniformity and linearity, and also the multiplicative complexity, which is the minimum number of end gates that you need to implement a function. So affine equivalence has been used for many years. It's actually uh, been around since, been used since the 50s. Um, and by 1972, all Boolean functions with up to five variables were classified. Then in 1991, Majorana classified also the Boolean functions with six input variables and Fuller proved in 2003 that this classification was complete. And when it comes to vectorial Boolean functions, the Cagnier demonstrated an exhaustive classification of bijective P by P S boxes for P up to four. But uh, this methodology was uh, not feasible for larger S boxes. So then uh, in 2017, Bozilov et al. restricted their work to only quadratic functions and managed to classify them um, for five inputs. So this restriction to quadratic functions is uh, justified because of recent interests in side channel uh, secure implementations and also multi-party computation. The methodologies of both the Cagnier and Bozilov et al. need an algorithm to find the affine equivalent representative of a class. And they both used an algorithm by Pidyukov et al, which finds this representative. And it works for bijective Boolean functions. The algorithm chooses as a representative the lexicographically smallest S box in LUT form. Let me demonstrate this. We see here on top the lookup table of an S box with four input bits and four output bits. So there are 16 possible input values and 16 possible output values. Since S is balanced, each output occurs exactly once. We are now looking for a function R that is a fine equivalent to S by constructing a fine functions A and B. Since we want R to be as small as possible lexicographically, we start with output bit zero. Now, in the first step, we need to guess the first output of A and we pick zero. Then we look up what the output of S of zero is, and that's one. And then that means that B of zero is also equal to one. In the second step, we need to guess again because you have no other information to go on. And now we guess that A of one equals one. Then because S of one equals B, we obtain that um, we obtain B here and then we again, we can put the output R of one to this, we can put it to the smallest available output, which is one. We repeat this one more time where we guess A of two equals two and S of two equals nine, which means B, um, B of two equals nine. Now it gets more interesting because of the linearity of A, we know A of three because the A 
of 3 is equal to the XOR of the previous three outputs. So it is equal to 3. And this is called a forward sweep. A forward sweep is completely deterministic uh, because there is no guessing involved. We can again look up S of 3, which equals C. And then here um, we cannot just choose the output 3 because B of 3 does not equal C because of the linearity of B. So we choose the smallest available power of 2. Then in the next step, um, we can again not use the linearity of A because 4 is a power of 2. But we don't have to guess because we can do a backward sweep. Since we didn't use the output 3 yet, we can put it here um, in R since we want the smallest possible output here. We can use the linearity on B to determine that um, B of 3 equals 3, which is the XOR of 1, B and 9. And then we look up um, the inverse of S, um, which is 7, which gives us that A of 4 equals 7. So this was a backward sweep, which was again completely deterministic because there was no guessing involved. Then we can again do a forward sweep because A of 5 is determined by the linearity based on the XORs of 0, 1 and 7. That gives us 6. We look up 6, S of 6 is F. And then again, we need to choose the smallest available power of 2. This process continues until R is defined. But remember, we made some guesses. So to find the absolute smallest representative, we have to repeat this process for every possible guess. For example, in this case, we chose A of 1 equals 1. And it resulted in a representative that goes 0, 1, 2, 4, 3, etc. Now, suppose that we make a different choice here. If we guess a of 1 equals 5 and we continue the process, then we obtain a representative that goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So this is lexicographically smaller than the previous. So to complete the entire algorithm, um, we need to exhaust all the guesses and then keep the representative, the lexicographically smallest representative. In order to extend existing classifications to larger, larger functions, we needed to be able to find a representative for non-bijective functions, and in particular, for balanced Boolean functions that may have less output bits than input bits. That means that the S box S is not invertible, which is a problem for the algorithm, because remember, the backward sweeps use the inverse of S. If S is not invertible, then each backward sweep um, in each backward sweep, there are 2 to the p minus q possible values for the inverse of s, if s is balanced. Pirjukov et al. estimated that the complexity of such an adapted algorithm would asymptotically follow this formula. And we draw it here for p equal to 5, so 5 input bits. As you can see, the complexity increases as q, the number of output bits, decreases. As a result, they advise to not use the algorithm for q smaller than p minus 2. However, when we implemented our algorithm and measured the experimental runtimes, we saw a very different trend. We saw that the complexity initially decreases as q decreases and only increases when q becomes very small. Of course, I do want to mention that these observations are for p equals 5, so it could be wildly different for larger p's, and also we only used quadratic functions. But the most important conclusion for us was that uh, we realized that it is practical, practical to use this algorithm for non-bijective balanced Boolean functions. In fact, we noticed that the algorithm could be more efficient. Here we show an example of an S-box with 4-bit inputs and 2-bit outputs. That means that every output value occurs four times. The first difference you might notice in the algorithm that is that instead of a lot of guesses, we have a lot more backward sweeps than before. This is because we can reuse y values. Every output y can occur four times in a representative r. And since we want r to be lexicographically as small as possible, we can keep using output 0 four times and perform backward sweeps instead of guesses. And backward sweeps are cheaper than guesses because they have 2 to the p minus q options, while guesses have 2 to the p options. This is why we see that the complexity first decreases when q decreases. Eventually, it increases again, because as q nears zero, the complexity of a backward sweep becomes the same as that of a guess. 
We now start from the methodology of Bozilov et al. that was used to classify quadratic 5-bit S-boxes. Their approach was to construct an exhaustive list of quadratic algebraic normal forms and to use the affine equivalent algorithm to get their representatives. The list was approximately 2 to the 23 items long, which is like 8 million items. Then, after eliminating the duplicates from the representative list, they ended up with only 76 functions, which represented the 76 quadratic affine equivalent classes for 5-bit functions. Using 16 threads, their method took 3 hours of runtime. The clear bottleneck here is the affine equivalence algorithm, uh, because it has to be performed so many times. So to optimize this methodology, we really need to minimize how often it is used. Thanks to our adaptation to the affine equivalent representative algorithm, we can do this process iteratively, with an increasing number of output bits. So suppose we start from all p by 1 boolean functions, we can combine them to find p by 2 functions and reduce them to their representatives. Then from the p by 2 classes, we can find all p by 3 representatives, and so on. By doing the search step by step, the number of times to find a representative is way smaller than with the previous method, because we can reduce the group of candidates to their representatives and eliminate duplicates in each intermediate step. I can make this a bit more clear with a graphical illustration. So let's assume that as a result of previous steps in the algorithm, we have a list of the representatives of p by q minus 1 functions. We also have an exhaustive list of p bit boolean functions. By concatenating each function in the first column with each function in the second column, we create a list of p by q functions. We then apply the algorithm to find the affine equivalent representative to each of those functions. Finally, when we eliminate duplicates, we obtain the list of p by q affine equivalent representatives. And this list is exhaustive. We first applied this new methodology to the 5-bit quadratic boolean functions. And while the 76 5 by 5 functions had already been classified, this new algorithm provides also the representatives of the non-bijective 5-bit boolean functions. The first version of the algorithm took us 50 minutes on four threads, which is already a big improvement over the previous work. But after some optimizations that we describe in the paper, we were able to reduce this time to barely six minutes. Thanks to this optimization, the classification of six-bit Boolean functions became possible. Before this work, we had no idea how many there could be. And the resulting number, 2,263 classes, is probably even higher than I expected. And apart from the 6x6 S-boxes, we also classified non-bijective balanced 6-bit Boolean functions. The representatives for all these classes and also the 5-bit Boolean functions can all be found online. Let's look at some of the properties of the classes that we found. We found that only 5 classes have odd parity and all the others are even. 70 classes have a quadratic inverse and all the others have a cubic inverse. In a follow-up work, which is also presented at this conference, we also found out that all of those 70 classes are fine equivalent to their own inverse. And finally, here is a distribution of the linearity and differential uniformity properties over the classes. The eight best classes achieve differential uniformity four and linearity eight which is not great, but it's also not bad for quadratic functions. And interestingly, the other classes have significantly worse differential uniformity or linearity. So we can classify balanced quadratic Boolean functions with up to six input bits. But there is a problem because people don't like quadratic functions because they don't always have good cryptographic properties. As I mentioned before, Quadratic S-boxes are preferred for side channel and MPC applications, but of course, we also need S-boxes with good cryptographic properties. Since we need good properties, but we also want efficient and secure implementations, a good compromise is to use higher degree functions that can be decomposed into a small number of quadratic functions. And we can adapt our classification methodology for this new goal. In particular, we will now look for a function f and a representative R2, such that their composition is a particular higher order function H. 
For simplicity, let's first assume that R2 is known and that we're just looking for F, such that F composed with R2 gives H. We will do this search again iteratively. In fact, we're going to start from the exact same algorithm as before. We're going to change only three things. Firstly, instead of using all Boolean functions on p-bits, we will filter them and use only those that can be decomposed with R2 to form H. How do we discard the bad candidates? This is very easy if they have the wrong algebraic degree um, or the wrong linearity or differential uniformity. Secondly, the same holds for the list of p by q representatives that we start from and of course also that we create. And finally, instead of reducing the candidates to their affine equivalent representatives in each step, we need to reduce them to the left affine equivalent representatives because we do not want to discard the affine function a that is required for the composition with R2. When we perform this algorithm for each representative R2, we obtain a list of composed functions with the same properties as H. If H is a part of this list, we have found a decomposition. If it is not, then a length 2 decomposition does not exist. Instead of looking for a specific function H, we can also choose a set of desirable properties and compose functions to create S boxes like that. For example, we use the algorithm to generate optimal 5-bit S-boxes with the maximum algebraic degree, the minimal differential uniformities and linearity, and the best part is that they can be efficiently implemented with a quadratic decomposition length of only 2. In conclusion, we adapted the affine equivalent algorithm to be suitable for non-bijective functions, which allowed us to optimize the methodology for classifying vectorial Boolean functions. We were able to create the first exhaustive classifications of quadratic vectorial Boolean functions on six bits, both bijective and non-bijective. And even though these classifications are limited to quadratic functions, they're very useful since recent implementations with side channel security or multi-party computation are much more efficient for quadratic functions. And finally, for those who do not like quadratic functions, we also show a composition or decomposition algorithm for higher order functions. Thank you for watching this presentation. The full list of representatives can be found on my website.